welcome guys welcome back to the channel with selsec and this video is special it's special because it's my first official video idea from you guys david daniel said please make a video how to create the on mythic c2 framework i really appreciate you guys i really appreciate when you do watch my videos i really appreciate all of your feedback even though it's negative or positive no matter i really appreciate your time spending watching my videos that means i'm doing something good so back to the point can you create such video as you can see i'm in study mythic but i am afraid that it's not quite possible because mythic works with what's so called agents so here there's a repository called mythic agents and all of these agents are pre-compiled to some version of programming language or executable so for example in my previous mythic video we used apple as a c2 agent and that c2 agent is pretty much the software that makes a callback that makes the reverse uh, connection and so on so it's an exe and it's hard to like convert all the things from exe to like dll and it's hard to trigger exe in memory from powershell so it's pretty much a bad idea to try run apple or any exe agents from dll let's say hijacking i'm not saying it's impossible i'm saying it's hard and there are more efficient methods but i have an idea for you buddy and we have two videos coming up. In that video, we're going to perform DLL hijacking again, but we're going to trigger a custom C2 payload, which is based on PowerShell and C Sharp. Then, in the next video, we're going to use and perform what's all called EXE hijacking, which is similar to the DLL hijacking, but we are abusing EXE files. So instead of replacing DLL files, we're going to replace EXE file. That way, we can trigger that Apple agent and we can trigger Mythic there. So, we have two videos coming up. Today we're doing DLL hijacking for custom C2. We made earlier and if you haven't watched the video, you can find it here. And in the next video, we're going to be doing Apple agent triggering from EXE hijacking instead of a DLL. I know it's going to be fun. Thank you for your video idea. But I'm saying that upon engagement or doing any kind of pen testing activities, hacking activities, so on, you always have to pick up the suitable thing. For example, as you saw, there is no DLL implementation on Mythic. I'm not sure about other C2 frameworks, but here it's gonna be a pain to convert all the things to be compatible to DLL. So it's better to pick something more suitable. For example, EXE hijacking, or if we're using DLL hijacking to go with some different C2 agent or C2 framework. I hope that's clear. I hope I, I explained it well enough. So now let's get back to the point. I went to my commando, started again, and found another DLL using the same process discarded earlier, like in the previous video with Pros Monitor, and discovered that, that this DLL called WinNLSRSS, sorry about the name, I'm bad at spelling things, that DLL here is being triggered upon activation of our application and upon logging in. So if you have not seen the previous video, we are pretty much not, we were not presented with a screen when we perform DLL hijack against proof API DLL. So we have a calculator, but we do not have the application itself. With, with uh, that, it's kind of suspicious because when the user clicks in, he can see a calculator or other PowerShell screen instead of his application, which is suspicious. So now with the, point, the point here is to find a DLL which is not that suspicious, not that useful, and can be hijacked. So that the application is not breaking, but the DLL is still working. How I generate that DLL and what does it work and what does it do? So what I did is pretty much here. I open up a terminal, Mythic is still installing, and I decided to shoot that video while that's installing. So yeah, just on the go. I hope you like the idea. Then what I did to generate that DLL is pretty much do follow by the same example we had earlier in the previous video. Follow that by example, but instead of like shell the DLL, I, I also of course change the name. But instead of that, instead of calc.exe, I used powershell.exe command, ipconfig.exe, then output that into ipconfig.walk. So that was my payload. We generated that DLL, and that way we can pretty much execute PowerShell commands. So here, if I log in, we can see a PowerShell screen, and ipconfig.walk is being popped up. So that way we can confirm code execution. And since we can pretty much do PowerShell commands, we can trigger our custom payload or C2. 
So let's first close the app because when you're doing proper DLL hijack, the app is being still open. So let's remove that from Task Manager. That's why you need to be careful and play with different DLLs to see which is more silently and which one does not break the application. So I close the app. Now it's time to set up our environment. So let's go to CD opt C2 partial reverse. All right, we have here remove from that exe. Or actually, I don't need. I'm not needing to remove that. Let's let it sit there. So let's do Tmux and set up our environment. So here we're gonna have that Python listener.py. Here we're gonna have that Python HTTP server 80, which is all right. I'm not sure if it was 80 or 8,000. So let me try. It's 80. All right. Let's clear that. Keep our environment structured. And now here we need to generate another DLL, which is going to be actually our malicious one, which is going to trigger the payload. So here let's do as example show scan. Now that time let's call the DLL with the proper name, which is win -N -N -S -R -E -S. I hope I spelled that time correctly. So paste it in and did not work because something happened with my shared keyboard. All right, so we a n n l s. Hope that's the name. It's not that important. We can we can change it on the go. So let's leave it that way. We a n n l s r a s. All right. I think that's it. Then. it's the o here all right now here we need to place our injection point so pretty much we're gonna need to do powershell exec now profile v2 then we're gonna need ep bypass then we're gonna need w hidden and then we're gonna perform e and paste the basic fourth command here then here we're gonna need file format to still be dll and the only thing we have to do is to pretty much make a partial and call that command and that should be it. So CMD equals to that. Then base bytes equals to that. Hmm, what was it? Base 64. Hmm. What was the syntax? Oh, I thought we forgot about that. Once again. So what was it? PowerShell base 64. I'm so bad with memory syntax. And call it. I did that. Then we have. And call it text equals to convert all right then we have to print and call the text all right but since we're bad with the clipboard hmm let's see now mouse pad maybe i were able to paste it here no all right so so my idea since our clipboard is being messed up is i'm gonna do set clipboard. All right, I'm going to do CD desktop. Do I have Vim? No, I don't. Notepad. Paywall.txt. Yes, paste it here. Save the file. And now do ipconfig and Python HTTP server. So we are 126, 129. Do 126, 129. Oh, come on. Why you are against me? One twenty nine, sorry, and then we need paywall.txt. So copy that, and there we go. So we need that here, and pretty much that's our DLL. So that command, by definition, is going to trigger our custom C2. Now we embed that command into the 
DLL itself and upon hijacking it, we should be able to trigger our custom C2. So let's run that and we're gonna need to do permissions. I am definitely sure we're gonna need that. So let's restart our web server. I'm gonna save my time and just run it with sudo. So sudo. Now wait. Come on. All right. And by the way, I'm not sure about that V2, so I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna run the same command, but without that V2. Not sure if it's a valid, valid payload. All right, now our server is running. So let me just go to my commando here. Reload my web server and run the, save the DLL, sorry. Now copy that and paste it here. So we're gonna, yes, it's, it's using the same name. So let's delete that and paste that here. We're ready for testing. So. Make sure that DVTA is being called successfully. No such process, which is nice. Now let's go to my Kavi. Go here and restart our web server because I want to create the environment. And now the moment of truth has come. So let's go here, here, run the DVTA, do one, one, do login. And maybe we did something wrong. Because we have that IP config dot walk, which is strange. So maybe I have maybe I have mistyped the, the DLL function. So let me just remove that to something. Try it again and see if it's, it's going to trigger again. And it is. So it's not that DLL. It's not the correct one. So let's try to find out which one is it. So remove the application again. Let's rename which one. Hmm. That Excel library. Let's try with one. Oh, it's actually that secure thing. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure it was a custom one as well. Now let's run that again. One, one. And nothing. All right. So. We have to pretty much re rename the thing. So instead of win DLL, let's do secure 32 dot DLL. Continue, rename that, make sure that the application is not running. All right, time for testing. So our environment is still all right. Now let's run the app again and do one, one, login. Something happened now, and we have a command execution. So if I do IP config, who am I? Nice. So here we can see no PowerShell. Of course, it triggered like for a millisecond, and of course, it's visible to the user, but this can be like done for many reasons, and I'm sure that most of the users using such thick client software would, would not even notice that something is going on. So the point here is you may you have to perform a, let's say a valid DLL hijacking, which means to find a valid DLL file. Because now, as you can see, after logging in, the application closed and that's visible. That's a problem. So to do that, in the next episode, we're gonna pretty much connect our application to the FTP and MSSQL server. That way, it's fully functioning. We can try to find a valid DLL for hijacking that is not gonna cause any errors or suspicious issues. Of course, it's a highly, highly difficult task because if that DLL is there, it must be for something. I mean, it's not just a sample DLL that the application requires. So it's hard to find such DLL, but we can try. And that way we can see, we can perform a DLL hijacking and perform a C2 callback. Where am I? Nice. That's it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your time and thank you for your feedback. Every like, every comment, I really appreciate and read all of them. 
also i have a discord group which i mentioned and i have created one so you can freely join is down in the links in, in the description and there we can share knowledge share articles share things together and learn better so i hope you enjoyed in the next video we're gonna perform what's all called exe hijacking and that way we're gonna trigger our mythic couple payload and receive a c to call back hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one